I don't really know all the weird things I've eaten. I've eaten hot dogs out of the back of cars in foreign countries. Girl, I eat on the edge. I'll eat anything. As long as it's gluten free. Okay, so we're gonna do this. A snail of a different color. Oh, I've had escargot before. The butter is the best part. Butter and garlic, best, two best foods ever invented. <laughs> that looks expensive. This is a 15 by 17 and a half near round. Mellow, mellow pearl from Thailand. It's about 30 carats. This is probably about as much as my education. Man, this looks like a piece of candy. So this is a very unique type of pearl. Um, it is not like the typical pearls we've seen on this channel before. These are super expensive. These are super rare. We are gonna bring in Jay Boyle, our senior buyer, and he's gonna give us the whole kit and caboodle about what actually is going on with the Mellow Mellow Pearl. What you all need to do is like, subscribe, and ring the bell and sit tight because we've got a great show coming up and Jay needs to scooch on over here. What you got there, Natalie? What you got here, Jay? You may have purchased this piece. I think I did. Pearl is calcium carbonate. Carbonate, C-A-C-O-3. Nacre, uh, yeah. which is, forms a pearl. This is a non-nacreous pearl, uh, but they are considered natural pearls and rare and they are valuable. When I look at this mellow pearl, 30 carats, I'm thinking, you know, recent price research I've done, one to $2,000 a carat. That's kind of the range. So these come from a marine gastropod, mm -hmm. which is a big snail. And it's sometimes called a zebra snail or a Indian volute or a baler snail. These large marine snails that frequent the muddy regions of maybe 60 to 150 feet, off of the shores of the South China Sea, Vietnam and Cambodia, and Burma and Thailand, the Andaman Sea. That's where they're found. These marine gastropods, the mellow, mellow, uh, that's the, that's a scientific name of the animal. Isn't Can you that believe cool? that? You had a song that that reminded you of. You mind singing a few beats of this? They call it Beetle, mellow, mellow. What, who's that by, the Beatles? Uh, no, Donovan. I don't know who that is. You don't know Donovan? No. Another topic. Mellow Mellow. Interestingly, up until around 1990, the West, you know, like USA and Europe, never heard of Mellow Pearls. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Well, it's this, this deep sea gastropod that is seldom found by anybody. But around 1990, from, from what I'm told, Vietnamese fishermen began to use these deep trawlers where they drag the bottom of the ocean. Whoa, that's wild. And they wild. got everything. Hundreds of feet down, they just dragged it all. And in their dragging and, and dredging of the bottom, they got some of these marine gastropods, the mellow, mellow snail. And then, of course, being fishermen, they sold the meat. Uh, most of the meat, I'm told, doesn't taste that well. It's not it's, like escargot. No, no, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of rubbery and chewy from what I've heard. That sounds so appetizing. And, and mostly it goes into China. Around 1993, a Swiss gem dealer brought to a gem dealer gemologist in New York, Benjamin Zucker, kind of a famous pearl aficionado gem dealer, brought 23 mellow, mellow pearls. Zucker had never seen one. He goes, oh my gosh, what it's is wild. this? Yeah. So Zucker, he, he buys the lot. Mm -hmm. Not only does he buy the lot, he gets so excited about it, he puts together a team of scholars, gemologists, pearl experts, and writers. Wowzers. Yeah. Oh my. And they travel to Vietnam to try to understand what this mellow, mellow stuff is all about, because hey, they knew nothing. You know what I need to understand, though? Why we have two boxes that we haven't opened yet. There's more to be. Okay. Oh my gosh. When we talked about this piece, it was known for that like flame structure right there. Yeah, flame structure is one of the things that makes a, a mellow pearl more valuable. Okay, tell us why. It's a it's an interesting uh, optical structure because of how the mellow pearl is formed, and in the finest, it looks like there's a kind of a living fire within the surface of the pearl, which has a porcelainous luster, not like regular pearls. 
and the flame structure is is important for its value. This has strong flame That's structure. Yeah. This is about nine carats. This one over here is about thirty carats. This has it, but it is much less. Not really. Well, you, you got to look closer. Oh, there we go. On the edges and on yeah, the ends. Yeah, very very easy. Yeah. Okay, this is cool. Check this out. This just came to us like moments ago from uh, Don't count on this one of our gemologist collector aficionados. Don't count on this to bail you out. Oh, there's a there's a clue. Oh, it's my shell phone. <laughs> what do you hear? Do you hear the ocean or is that Absolutely, just Absolutely, the ocean's in there. This is called, this is the Mellow Mellow oh, Snail Gastropod Shell. Not surprised shell. because we have that color on the inside. That's where it comes from. Yeah, the okay, so tell the, us a little bit about this. Right, so Mellow Mellow is called the uh, Baler Snail. Okay. Baler because the shells are literally used by fishermen to bail. When the boat begins to leak, they hold it and they bail the water out this way. It's called a baler snail. That's Isn't that interesting? Weird. These shells, besides being used to bail water, they're also used in religious ceremonies oh. where they drill a hole here. Okay. And then they blow into it and it's and it it's it's like a horn. I think I can and it see creates that. a big Vietnam, I'm told that the emperors, the old emperors of Vietnam, the last emperor was Bao Dai. And wow, Bao, you were just a wealth of information well, today. I mean, <laughs> it's pretty cool. But but Bao Dai loved mellow pearls, so he was the emperor of Vietnam. That's where they came from. Even though they're rare, he's the emperor. He can have whatever he wants. It was the most prized thing in his possession. It was thought to be an example of perfection. The story is that how are these pearls formed? They were formed by the celestial dragon, which represents kind of heaven. Mm -hmm. The celestial dragon cried and a teardrop fell into the ocean, fell into a mellow, mellow snail, and then the pearl was formed. And so from that, if it was perfectly round and had all the color and that beautiful orange color, the emperor saw that as a form of perfection. The emperor himself was the dragon, the most powerful being on earth, and the pearl was the perfection that the emperor strived to become. And you'll see that in the motifs of different types of oriental art. So it was, it was kind of what the emperor aspired to, the perfection of the mellow pearl. There was a pearl that sold at Christie's. I think it was around 230 carats and it sold, I think, in 1997 for about $750,000. That is so much money. <laughs> That's a lot of money. One good question to ask would be, what makes certain mellow pearls more valuable? Like that one I talked about that was like 750000 Shape is one. Round are valued more, like round. Perfect, perfectly round, like a marble. And how do they tell if it's perfectly round? They do this test that they like roll it across the table, they which we're not gonna do on either of these pieces. because To they're both... see if it rolls in all four directions without wobbling. Which is very scientific. Almost impossible. Flame structure. Flame structure is that interesting surface optical structure that it literally looks like there's flames within the color, like flickering. Size, bigger is more valuable. Right. And then uh, color, mm -hmm. color, because the color on Mellow Pearls ranges from uh, kind of a pale yellow to tan to brown. You like this one though. Yeah, then it goes into this kind of peachy color and the finest, the ones that sell for mega bucks, they have almost a tangerine like the like the color of a of a, of a tangerine, a, a kind of a vivid, very vibrant, deep orangey color. So all of those things go to make up rarity, size, shape, color, flame. Really exotic. I've pearls. seen a few of them used in um, some high end jewelry. Indeed, yeah. yes. Uh, but not very often. No, no, not sorry. very often because there's there there really aren't very many of them. And remember that story about the Vietnamese trawlers. Mm -hmm. In about 1990, they started doing the deep dredging trawling. It is thought that as a result of doing that for 25 or 30 years, they have essentially 
almost wiped out the ability of the mellow, mellow gastropod to reproduce itself. So there's fewer and fewer of those being able to reproduce, which, which means for the collector and the pearl connoisseur, these mellow pearls are not going to be found very much in the future because the animal that produces it are nearly wiped out. That's pretty sad. The wild stuff, isn't it? It's kind of sad. You know, generally these go into private collections and they don't come out. They generally don't come out. You know, I I think of things like that like a like a master work of art, a Van Gogh, a Matisse. They don't go down in price. Why? Because more people want to own one. There's only a limited number mm -hmm. of these masterpieces. That would be a masterpiece of Mellow Pearl. Like so you can't recreate the Mona Lisa. No, nor the best Mellow Pearl you've ever seen. If anyone is interested in owning a mellow, mellow pearl, this is your guy right here. We have a couple we can show you. We got a couple up our sleeves in the deep, dark depths of JTV's Gringotts Bank. Have you seen Harry Potter? Yes. I think that's what happens here. That we, There's just like some trap door somewhere in this building that they hide all the really, really beautiful stuff. There's a lot of magic in gemstones at, and, and it's happening all the time. At JTV too. <laughs> Do you have any advice for people that want to be gem dealers or gem, gem merchants or in the gem business? Think about it. Hard? Twice? Multiple times? Like think about what? Think about it. Okay, everyone, we're going to do a closer look though and I want you all to take a closer look at that flame structure. Yeah, that's the one. Take a look at the color. Um, I mean, it it is very beautiful. Mm -hmm. Hard to not fall in love with that piece. Right, everyone don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that bell um jay you is a bitmoji fan but i think we're gonna do an emoji today okay. what do you think what were you gonna say i was gonna do this one here what is the clap the, the, the applause okay one. send us those applause emoji um send everyone a big thank you to jay and hey guys i need your help i need you to ask jay for gemstone stories in the comments because i've been trying to ring cool stories out of him for a very long time and I'm gonna need everyone's help out there. A lot of stories out there. A lot of YouTube pressure. Any any final words of wisdom? No, just uh, gems are easy to love as well as rare pearls. We love them. Yes, we do. Catch you later, y'all. <laughs>